script to read? I have my script to read. Thank you, Angela. Thank you. Uh, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, General Law Chapter 30A, Section 18, this meeting of the Amherst Town Board of Assessors is being conducted via remote participation. Um, and now I have to check to make sure that everyone's video and audio is working properly. Ken Hargreaves, can you hear me? Yes. All right. Uh, Lee Hines, can you hear me? Yes. Elizabeth Duffy, can you hear me? Hmm. She's connected, but, but I don't think she's there right. Well, here she comes. Okay. Elizabeth Duffy, can you hear me? Um, but she's not muted. Hmm. There she is. Elizabeth Duffy, can you hear me? No, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. Elizabeth Duffy, can you hear me? All right, we cannot hear you at all. Am I am I the only one that can't hear? No, no. no I can't hear. Can you hear me? I can hear you, David. Okay. Can you hear her, David? No, not yet. Okay. You all enjoying this lovely day? Oh, it's beautiful out there. I love your ceiling, David. Why, oh, thank you, Ken. It's very, is it new or has it been there a long time? Uh, well, we, we had to, we built the porch about five years ago. We had the our deck collapse. Yeah. So we figured when we we're going to do it, we'd make a porch out of it. And I always saw this in some other places. And so we went up to WD and they had a bunch of redwood we were able to use. So it came out quite nice. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I, I can't really call the meeting to order without the assessor. Not usually, no. Try your microphone, Liz. Try your microphone. No, try your earphones with your microphone. Oh, okay. Yes, she is. Something click. Now? Yeah. Yep. Right. Hello? Yay! Okay. Hey. We're going to go with this. Hear? The right, only thing hear? I will say is if some, I'm going to put my, my, I'm so sorry, I'm trying to squish Steven. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to put my phone on airplane plane mode and I'm going to, if I get a phone call on the stupid telephone, sometimes it will interrupt this thing. I just want to give you a good FYI. And I can actually close the door because Steven's yeah. on his own computer. Okay, I'd like so to hopefully, call the, yeah, everything will go fine. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Um, remember, um, we are um, being recorded. Uh, this is being recorded to the web, and it's going going on to the Town of Amherst YouTube channel. Okay, so uh, I now call the meeting to order. Um, uh, I want to ask everyone to mute until it, because it, it cuts down on background noise. Um, okay, I think that's all the introductory stuff I have to do. Hang on a minute. Um, and now um, I ask uh, for, I move that we approve the minutes of March 11th, 2021. And I've just lost, and I've just lost my, wait a minute. I've just lost my picture. There we go, sorry. 
Has everyone had a chance to look at the minutes? So moved. Well, to I, I should point out that uh, they didn't get emailed until, I didn't get mine until about 15 minutes before the meeting. So gentlemen, have you seen your, um, the minutes? Yes. Yes. Okay. Ken? Yes. All right. All those in favor, any, anybody want to make any changes or corrections, additions, corrections? No? No. Okay. All those in favor of approving the minutes of March 11th, 2021, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? That's unanimous. Okay. We move on to motor vehicle abatement reports. Ms. Duffy. Hey. Um, this is the first on the abatements between March 8th and March 12th for excise abatements in the amount of $5,417.15. Okay, we usually see a list. That is also here. Do you have any questions, gentlemen? No, because we're not seeing the list. You're not seeing the list. We still have this summary sheet up, Liz. There you go. There, there we, go. we go. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm looking at this. Is the list for? This is the list for March 8th to March 12th. Okay. Vehicle abatements. Okay, I see 40 abatements. And I don't know whether I'm seeing the bottom of the page or not. Is that the, is that the total at the bottom? Yeah. It does look like 5,035 5, for this, this segment though. Remember it's in three segments. So if you add the 261 and the 120 above, there's subtotals. So these are all subtotals. The main total is on the on the first page. That's the 5417. So the 5035 is only for this grouping right here that were done in 2021. The 2020 abatements, there was two of them, uh, Hurlbut and Pacman. And they had two hundred and sixty-one dollars and eighty and, and one cent for abatements, and then the, the abatements for two thousand and nineteen, there were only two of them, and that was for one hundred and twenty dollars and forty-two cents. Is everybody still there? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I got a little scared there for a minute, so that's why it's fifty-four seventeen as a summary. So you okay. have 40, 44 abatements in all. The largest bunch was that um, uh, third group there that was done for 2021. So it's the, the, the total of the 120, 261, and uh, 5,035? That's correct. That makes up the 5417.15. OK. Did we lose Richard? Richard? Mm -hmm. Do not know. Let me stop sharing so I can see who's participating. Uh, I have Richard here. Oh, there, there he comes. is. Hi, Richard. I don't know what's going on, but it's not good. Your, your signal uh, unstable? I don't know what's going on. Um, okay. Did you have any questions about that particular abatement we just reviewed? Nope. That was the 54-17-15 for the three years, 19, 20, and 21. Okay. Okay. You got a vote on that one? Okay. Did something happen while I was away? Mm, not really. I mean, um, basically, mm -hmm. we had the abatement up for uh, the first on the agenda. And let me just bring that back up for you. Can everybody see that? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, so these are yeah. the, the three segments, 2019, 2020, 
and 2021. The sum of the parts are 40, um, 54, 17, and 15 cents. It's separated by assessment year. And if there is no other comments, I guess okay. I'm looking for a vote on that. Okay, I'm sorry. I have no idea what you what you just what you just brought up. I thought we were looking at abatements for the week of March 8th to March 12th, 2021. And that's what these are. These are from March 8th to March 12th, 2021. Okay. There was two of them for fiscal year 2019. So that's for that particular tax roll. Oh, I see what you're saying. I'm saying, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. for $120 and 42 we'll cents. Let's draw here, okay? I see that, yep. Okay, two for fiscal year 2020. Yeah. And that was Mr. Hurlbut and Mr. Packlin for 126, I'm sorry, 261 and penny. Yeah. And then we had over 40 abatements for 2021 for 5,000, oh gosh, this thing is blocking me, $35 and 72 cents. Okay, and so on the agenda, it says $5,417.15. That's correct, because that's the sum total of all of those done in that period. Okay, I, I move that we approve those abatements. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Okay, that's moving on, we're gonna go to our next, our next grouping, which is uh, March 15th to March 19th. Um, is that apparent on the screen for you now, gentlemen? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. And we have a total of $1,002.83 for that period. And okay. it is all for 2021 fiscal year. I'm sorry, one is for 2020 for $19.58. And then the rest, uh, the, the 12 others are for 2021 for $983.25 for a total of $1,002.83. Okay, now I'm I'm just curious. We're seeing some from other years and that we've ne I, I never recall that happening before. So what's the reason? Oh, you have, you have done that in the past. It's just, I haven't really pointed that out. This is the fiscal year that you, you see in the far left side. And um, we are allowed to go back to previous right. tax rolls aside from the, the current 2021 tax roll. All right, I, have, I move that we approve those abatements for a total of $1,002.83. Second. Excellent. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, that's unanimous. Okay, this is your third uh, group of abatements for March 22nd to the 31st. It's for a total of $2,230.77. Um, you have two from 2020 for $87.38. And then you have 28 from 2021 for 21 43 and 39 cents. Okay. Um, I move uh, that we approve the, that set of abatements for $2,230.77. Second. Okay, this is the real uh, estate. Call for the vote. We didn't have the vote. Oh, I'm so sorry. All those Richard? in favor, please say. Please say aye. Aye. All opposed. That's unanimous. Liz. Yes. On the first one, just to go back to for a minute for clarification. Certainly. The, yeah. Um, it didn't have the summary like these uh, last two did. Uh, um, that's why I'm we had the. That's why we had the question about the different amounts. Is that was there another page that did have the summary on it? This particular one only had the one page. Oh, well, yeah. Uh, the other two had summaries. This had a this, summary, and the other one did. The reason why I, I asked. Yeah, the reason why I asked that is because the signatures are not on that page. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, good question. I don't know why this one doesn't. Because it has the signatures here, it says Board of Assessors, yeah, yeah. and it comes after. And it the has the signet, yeah. So, so I don't know why it doesn't have a separate page for this one. I <laughs> couldn't, couldn't explain it. It doesn't change it. I mean, it does no, still have but, the right. designation, but you're right, it did change. It's the not consistent. Now. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I don't. I, I have no. I no no recall as to why that would be different. Mm. I think the one for the five thousand four hundred seventeen, you did have a summary sheet. Yeah, and so did I have the same with the, with this one. This one has a summary. Well, the other one had a summary as well. It's just because there's too many lines on the first one. Yeah, I think so. 
I think mm. so. That's about it. I think it's just the number of appeals, the number of abatements, I should say. Is it okay to proceed to the March 24th real estate abatements? Yes. Okay. So we have the listing here. It's for a total of, um, uh, it's two pages of it in total. So we, we do have 18 abatements um, and we have a total of $3,978.94. And uh, this deal, you know, these abatements, um, I think they're, deal, they're dealing mostly with um, the tax relief. I believe that's what then when, when she's applying the personal exemptions and it also adjusts the CPA when we adjust the assessment on the on the um, the tax relief. Say that again, Liz. What's in other words, when someone gets tax relief, you adjust both the real estate assessment okay. tax as what, well as the community preservation tax. So that's why you see two for each account. Okay, and the reason they got tax relief? It's for personal exemptions. In other words, they were either, um, they, they met the criteria for veteran or- Okay, okay. these are all exception, exemptions we have in town. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. These are previously approved exemptions, right? Correct. So I'm sorry, the overvaluation, that term is used to, to refer to that? I believe so. I'm not sure why it says overvaluation, to be honest with you. I'm not certain why she chose that particular value um, uh, instead of a exemption reference. I don't know if there is one, so I will check that listing to see if there's maybe a better reference than overvaluation, because it makes mm -hmm. it sound like we made a mistake, and I don't believe yeah. that's the case. Actually, actually those are all overvaluations for the condominiums that we adjusted in last month. Oh, that was for Evergreen. Okay, now that makes sense because it's only a small amount that we're adjusting these. So that is for the uh, abatements that we received for the condominium increase this year. As you know, um, I, I believe I mentioned in uh, a earlier meeting that we had an increase in condominiums. So the condominiums across the board in the community um, increased uh, over 10%. So that, that's compulsory that we uh, increase the assessment accordingly. Um, when we took a look at the appeals from Evergreen, and we did have a few of them, the smaller units were recognized as not necessarily growing in the market as much as um, the larger units. And we did adjust them accordingly. Um, I did take David's advice to adjust these, um, these particular condominiums. And I do agree with his, with his um, recommendation. And that's why you have them now. Okay. Okay. So these are not personal exemptions. These they are, are not not personal exemption. They are indeed overvaluations. Okay. All right. Okay. So these are the bills went out and on a certain level, and they're being uh, abated um, for this fiscal year. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. All right. They did receive an increase for fiscal year 2021. They challenged the assessment, and um, we had a number of them, as you can see. So um, it was evident that we needed to make some sort of adjustment and that we did adjust 18 of them. Okay, so, so some of these happened without the person appealing, is that correct? No, these people appealed. These particular people appealed. Okay. And actually it's only um, nine people because there's two for each one. Okay, so, so are there other units that need to be reassessed? They'll be adjusted accordingly for next year. All right, okay. Um, any, any discussion from the rest of the board? No. No, okay. Uh, I move that we um, approve these, uh, these real estate abatements, totaling $3,978.94. Excellent. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, that's unanimous. Okay. Um, I do not have anything for executive session. Um, I don't see public here to participate. Well, I thought there were three uh, uh, exemption requests. Yeah, we're getting to those. Well, but, isn't that executive session? Well, I, you know, I've looked at that and I think the answer is no, but um, 
I'm looking. I'm seeing a look of surprise on David's face. Yeah, that's what um, we used so to maybe do. Maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong. I looked at the various situations for executive session in the in the open meeting law guide, and I did not see anything that fell into this category. So, well, the the exemptions actually stay on the top of them, but they're exempt under fifty nine five. I think um, the end reason for that is you're discussing people's income usually. Yes, I know. So. Well, but actually on the exemption form itself, I do believe it says it's confidential. So do you gentlemen want us to, to, to go into confidential setting right well, now? Well, I want to, this is what I want to do. When we go in executive session, I want to go in executive session and not come back. So I want to okay. get all the public work done first before okay. we go, go to the exemptions. Then why don't we go over um, the residential exemption as according to the agenda? David, I believe you have something for the residential exemption. Well, just uh, an update. We got a, I took uh, the information that's been supplied from the rental information. And I also took all the ones that we were not able to get them together. And now I've got a full database of 6,317 accounts. Of those 6,000 uh, plus, there are 40, almost 4,300 that we know are owner occupied at the minute. Of the other 2,000, there's about 1,500, I think, if you're going to send out a survey to, we should do that to those 1,500. Uh, and those will be <clears throat> ones that have either changed hands or really are rental information. Now, for uh, this is mostly for Ken's information, but he was the one that was dealing a lot with the rental information. What I did when I went through the rental stuff was I looked at all the two and three families that they had on there. And any that I was able to determine had an owner occupied, I left it as owner occupied. And if it did not, I made it uh, non owner occupied. So that's why I've come up with so many. And I had 1460, I believe, that's what we have to send out um, surveys to if that's what you want to do. Have we heard anything back from Sean? Liz? Not so far now. Was Sean supposed to be with us today? I, I invited him. Okay. I mean, that was, what, in my mind, the next step was to wait to hear back from Sean before we did any survey or anything. But Dave, that's great. Now we, now we have a clearer picture of what we need to address. All right, well, I, I, intend, I intend to go ahead with these now and put down the impact of 10, 20, and 30% and have them in separate sheets going forward if you want for a presentation, okay. if you want to make uh, to the council. Okay. Uh, I guess, Liz, can you follow up with Sean and see, I know they've been busy doing stuff, but what's his timing as far as getting some kind of feedback on that additional <clears throat> draft we sent him? Well, as you, as you know, I sent him the uh, summary draft, the four page yeah. summary, and um, he attended our last meeting. Um, we, all, we all looked at the uh, survey to send out. So that's all ready to go. I have uh, IT ready to put that into SurveyMonkey to launch. Um, but you know, basically I'm waiting to hear back from the two of them, uh, Sean and Paul, yes. as to um, you know, what they want us to do as far as proceeding forward. As far as expanding the group, they decided um, that they did not want to expand the group last I spoke to them, but I have not approached him on that subject again, although Sean was part of our meeting. So he was, he knows that that was something that we discussed. So you got feedback though from Sean that they, basically what we did is all they want to do. Is that right? Basically, or, that's, what I've, that's what I am un, of the understanding aside from the survey itself. Because my concern is we send the survey and we get this information, but there's, I mean, we need to know from the council what they want. What's the objective of this study? Well, I thought, you know, if we don't know that, we don't know what we're, I don't want to send anything under my hand at writing out anywhere. Because no. I don't know what I, we're trying to study or answer. Okay, can I, as you know, they have to do this at the classification hearing each year. Yeah. Okay. I thought what we were supposed to be doing now was gathering the information and then having a consult with them to see if it's something they will want to go forward with at the, uh, later on 
or uh, the, really, I thought this was a. I thought this was an exercise in putting the information together for them to give them a better understanding of the impact. Okay. And then instead of waiting for one night in December, just try and get as much information as we can. Okay, well, that's fine if that's what we want to do and that's what the council wants. Okay, so that's what I thought of. I mean, I, okay. I mean that's the normal process yeah. that we normally do. And if we want to just go through that, then let's just get the data correct and send the survey out, realizing if they want any more data, we can't, we're going to have to send out another survey because we can't do anything. I mean, it's just, we have to send, we can get, Clarify the data, whether it's owner occupied or not with a survey, you're right. Yes. Okay, and that's the data. That's all we need. Okay. Okay, if that's all they want. David has the mailing list ready to go for me. I'll mail okay. merge it and send it out yeah. as soon as you want. So the only question we're gonna ask is, are you owner occupied or not? For, well, um, the initial survey um, that we had looked at last time, I can bring that up again if you like. Um, I have it handy. I just think without some kind of feedback from the council, but if that's what the town council wants to do, town manager wants to do, that's fine. But I'm going to stand up in the meeting and say, that's what you told us to do. Well, if they want more answers. Why didn't we get them more answers? We were told not to get them more answers. Yeah, well, I mean, they, they, as I remember it, and I mean, they're going along, the only, they wanted us to come forward with a, a, a clear understanding or a better understanding at least of what the residential exemption, exemption could mean to people. And the only thing we need to do for that is find out the owner occupying, and then we can go forward with it. I don't remember them asking for anything else. Okay. Okay, this is the survey that um, Ken actually drafted most of this. I'll be um, impacting it with the ID number, the property address, the owner's name. That's something that I'll merge into the form before it's dispatched. Um, as far as uh, where they're going to respond, they'll have the, yeah. the chance to respond either through SurveyMonkey and yeah. we'll put a link on it so that they can go to SurveyMonkey or they can respond by sending this back completed. Yeah, I don't think we need any of this, Liz. I mean, what we just need is what David just said. Is your is it owner occupied or not? That's all we so need. So do you just want this one question in the top? Yeah, that's all we need now. Well, that's okay. that's my question, I mean. Yeah. So just I, this. Okay. All right, we can edit it right now and you guys can give me the blessing. Okay. How's that? So this is it. Yeah. That would be the extent of your survey. I'll put a link below it for this for the survey of, monkey. Uh, get rid of no go that last part. Oh, sorry. Yeah. It's always good to have another set of eyes. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, are they getting a cover letter of some kind? No, well, that's or, no. That's up to you guys if you want me to put it together some kind of a cover letter. I think they need an explanation as to why we're doing this. Right. Yeah. Okay. We're doing this because one person on the town council decided that they wanted us to examine it. Um, but I mean, um, how am I going to, I mean, I wouldn't put a necessarily a separate cover letter. We only have one line on this survey. It would be more of an introduction to this particular letter. That's what I would do, yes. Yeah. So I can put a paragraph in here that, um, you know, to some extent that this is a, um, a survey to determine the resident population of the town of Amherst and leave it very, um, very open-ended. Well. Or do you want me to say we're, we're examining a uh, possible tax relief for the community? No way. No, no, I no, no, I, no, I, I didn't no, think you wanted no, me to do that. No, no, yeah. no. Okay. So we're trying to establish the resident population for the town of Amherst. Correct? Right. So, 
Um, so perhaps, um, yeah, just something that says, yeah. Uh, Liz, whatever you sign out off, make sure Sean is signed off on it. Oh, most definitely. I'll be sending it to, to Sean well, and I'll be sending it to you so you can have an opportunity. I assume there's to, a cost associated with this too, right? Well, it's 57 cents a piece, I believe, for pe yeah. for mail going out. I don't believe we get a bulk rate either. Because I'm lost what we're doing here, but that's fine. Well, and so am I. Just so make that sure, makes two of us. So just make so Sean. Now, that, that, now we have a quorum. Make sure Sean is, this is what Sean wants to do. That uh, Dave, Dave, want David. You were going to uh, also um, prepare a percentage, uh, uh, a, a, an implication um, document, right? That says, okay, at certain percentage levels, it has an impact. Yes. Yeah, that was something we were going to put together. And when we go to talk to the council, sometime, I think somebody had put down in September to talk to the council mm -hmm. to give them an overview. Mm -hmm. from what I remember and that's mm -hmm. when I was going to have that already I will have that ready within the next week and I'll send it to all of you if you like mm -hmm. well so um, I'm trying to figure out how to put this into um, uh, language that goes into the minutes uh, are, are, are we taking action here today we're doing something as a result of a direction from the town council right it was, it was, we were given direction from council to determine whether or not the residential exemption was a good fit for the town of Amherst. And um, I believe what was discussed last uh, November of 2020 was when we had that council meeting. Um, it was determined that more information was needed to find out what our resident population was. And that's what's being provided, right? That's yeah. what we're examining at this time. So we think we're going to get an accurate count from this of owner occupied, um, owner occupied residences in the town from this well, survey. Out of the six thousand, David's weaned it down to fourteen hundred and fourteen hundred sixty accounts, and okay. of those fourteen hundred sixty accounts, we'll send out this survey and say, "Are you a resident as of January?" Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. But uh, you know, as far as the explanation as to why they are receiving this, we're just going to say we're trying to determine the resident base for uh, the residents in the uh, the town of Amherst, I believe. Okay, so we're going to need this in the form of a motion of some kind. Mm, I don't know that we are because it's it's really just a discussion as to how we want to proceed. No. We're not voting on anything. There's no action to be taken other than to just determine what the verbiage should be and how you want it presented. Yeah, I, I'm still, I need, maybe Sean has told you, Liz, has Sean told you this is all he wants to go back to the council with? He hasn't given me a lot of guidance on this. Well, we're just okay, waiting. So I'm, I'm, hey, they just want information from us. They haven't given me a whole lot of guidance okay. as far well, as where they want me to go with it. Oh, okay. So we do well, this. I, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, you know, I, I'm not in a, I, I, I guess I, I'm not feeling like I'm in a position to approve this. I, I don't really understand. Um, oh, I don't mind. I don't mind approving this. This is just data gathering. But right, this is just to, add, to data get, uh, arrive at the number that we that have they, to work is with. That, is that all they want? The, the, you know, they want to know how many people are owner occupied and how many people are not. Is that, and then do the normal classification presentation that David's done over the years. Mm -hmm. They're happy with that. Right. If they're happy with that. That's what we're, we can do. I mean, one of the things you should be aware of is when we do have the results back from the survey um, to determine who is a resident and who is not a resident, we can then examine the assessment and how uh, any kind of um, tax relief program might affect it. Right. No, yeah, we don't I, have enough data. I, I, I gotta say, I gotta say, we have to stop using the phrase tax relief. Okay. We have to. That's we not... have to stop using that phrase because it doesn't exist in Massachusetts, in Amherst, it doesn't exist. Okay, we will so. always raise the level up two and a half percent plus new growth. There is no tax relief other than other than the frequency with which we 
put override votes out. So we cannot use the phrase tax relief. There is none in Amherst. It's not, it's just not, other than overrides, there is no tax relief in town. And okay. I think those of us who went to assessor school yeah. and learned about Prop Two and a Half know that that's the case. Yeah. This, if this, if anything was done with this, it would just be reallocation of taxes. It was yeah. tax relief. That's an good, that's right. The tax burden. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. And that's right. We have a council that I think somewhere around eleven or twelve of our council members get this, understand this. I think most of them understood it. Mm -hmm. That it is a reallocation of the tax burden. Could be. And the, the problem I have is the council has to tell us if they want to consider that, why do they want to consider it and what information do they have or need to consider it? Because there's no way they can reallocate taxes without knowing how it's going to affect low income, renters, homeowners. Oh, and that's their choice. If they don't want to have that information, that's fine. Ken, I, I am proposing giving them that information as much as we can. But we don't know. The, do you know the low income population? No, but we know what apartment complexes may be affected by it by most. So you, you, that's where you're going to. Um, I mean, we know that. The, the, um, oh, hell. <laughs> you're still there. Well, Rolling Green or whatever it is, yeah. we want to so they'll be able to see what the impact would be on Rolling Green. They'll be able to see what the uh, and um, what's the new one list is up in North Amherst. Um, the uh, Beacon Properties. I thought I thought what I read was affordable housing projects are not affected by. That's what other towns have told. No, no, they are affected. Because They're all affected. No. What's going to under state law, they're not. Yes, they, they don't. They, they get a pass through if there's an increase to the utilities and taxes. Okay. That would be a pass through. Usually, most leases are now triple net. And for they. Um, for conventional apartments. For the, well, for even for, for the. Affordable housing is approved by the state, their rents. That's true, but the, the, yeah. they want it to be so much percentage lower than the market rent. Well, well, they pass it through. It doesn't, it doesn't matter that. No. Whether they pass it through or not, the taxes would change because there will be a higher tax rate within the residential class. Yeah. So that would be up to the landlords. They'd have to sort that out. Right. Okay. I mean, I, I just think the average homeowner in the Amherst wants to know that they could save a lot of taxes if other people paid more. Yeah. And so no, that's you know, the homeowners being asked to do these override this override this year and stuff. And they're not happy about taxes going up, the people I talk about. I'm sorry. I'm I'm sorry, you mentioned an override this year. For the, library. School, for the school. There is there is no override coming this year, Ken. There's no override. When's it coming? It's coming years away. Yeah. For, the school? They, for the school, yeah, but not this year. For years, okay. Yeah, no, not this we year. Won't, we won't have good schools for another 10 years then. I, 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 okay, I didn't realize schools were so far back on our list. I have, I'm sorry, I, I watched the council. I am not aware of an upcoming override uh, proposal. Okay. I didn't know it was years away to get our schools back in order. It's but years away to it's years away for an override to build a new school. Okay. So what about to have the Jones Library last night? Is that coming underneath the cap? Yes, supposedly. Okay. That is that whole project is occurring without an override. So that's underneath the cap now. Okay. Okay. Well, let's just make sure Sean's on board, whatever you want to do. Okay. Okay. I'll, um, you know, I'll send him the recording from this meeting so that he'll have it in verbatim. And that way um, he can see, you know, our concerns and, um, you know, we how just he wants wanna, to respond. We sure when you're standing before the council next year, that you've answered what they want to answer. That's all. Mm -hmm. Correct. Well, we did answer what they they um, they asked, but we gave it based on uh, the current statistics that we had. 
and we, we couldn't accept it because we said you weren't on board for a year. Well, you're going to be on board for a year now when you stand before next year. But we did actually provide statistics uh, based on the, the data that we had at the time. Okay. But we felt, I felt that at that time that I was asked uh, that our statistics were not current to give them an exact answer as to whether this impact was going to be positive or negative, what okay. impact it would be, because we've been 10 years out from uh, the actual initial analysis. Okay. Well, that's what you're, you want to be in good shape when you stand before them this year. <laughs> yeah, and I think I think sending the survey to the the fourteen hundred is probably okay. going to shape up our uh, our database. It's just a matter of do they want us to do that? Oh, I think they want us to do that for sure. It's a matter okay. of whether they want us to do any more. So as of today, I think that what I'm hearing from you all is send out the survey, give them a brief you know um, paragraph saying you know this is to determine the resident the residents here in Amherst and just send it out. And uh, we'll put the survey on Survey Monkey, and it's only that one line. That should do it. But I will also ask Sean to, um, to, to address your questions and concerns. Yeah. And just make sure Sean's on board with doing this survey thing. Yep. OK, so you want, you, you want confirmation from Sean to send out the survey. Yeah, I personally don't feel like it's the right time, but I'll I'll go along with whatever you want to do with Sean. I so. am not, I'm only one individual and all I can say is our database on residents is not current okay, unless well, we no, do the survey. If no, they no, want no. us to update that so that we have that information, then it's up to them, you know? Yep. Um, so I, th I think it's a matter of, we table the survey until we hear more feedback from Sean, is that correct? Yeah. No. John? No. I what I'm hearing is go ahead, if you need more better data to stand before the council and Sean's on board with that, go ahead and do whatever you need to get better data for yourself. I think that's important. To do, yeah, to do the process. Because I can't, I can't say that we've done our due diligence to determine what the, what the base is unless yeah. we do the survey. And so yeah. you'll take that completely off the table this year. You won't be able to tell them we don't have good data. We right. do have good data. We do have good data after we get our results. Okay. So that's about all I can say. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else on that on that topic, Dylan? I'm good. Okay. So the the next thing on the agenda is um, basically: is there any public comment out there? And I don't know that I see any public. Do you, Richard? I don't. Okay. We have just our six participants. No, and I, um, um, yes, that's right. Yeah. So now it would be a good time to go into executive session. All right. I move that we go into executive session uh, to discuss uh, several um, uh, elderly exemption applications. Uh, and given that this is re uh, requires the discussion of uh, personal finances and personal net worth, um, I believe this is this is appropriate for executive session. So I move that we go into executive session. Second. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Well, I will leave you all. You all righty. Thank all you, right. David. I appreciate Thank your you, help. David. Good to Thank see you. you. Mm -hmm. Richard, right. uh, Richard, a clarification, because I know you had a question about uh, the confidentiality around this. I'm wondering, yeah. should the recording be stopped at this point if we yeah. go into yeah. Yes, it doesn't executive. It's not executive session unless we go to a uh, a different um, a different recording. Okay. So. Okay. So how do? Yeah. I have video settings. And. Um. Because I don't want to lose any of you. Right. Um. Can. Can you talk to our technical person about, I'm sure we're not- That would be Angela. To, um, yeah. Steven, I believe you're on with us. Steven? Um, yep. Do you know how to um, take this off public? <clears throat> like put it in a waiting room for people to come to? Or is that um, something we have to do prior? 
I have no idea. Could you check with Angela, please? Tell her we would like to enter an executive <clears throat> session if she would ask, if she could please give us some instruction. Um, okay, sure. Thank you. All right. Well, we do not have um, folks in attendance and it does give me a chance here. It says pause or stop recording. I'm gonna try it.